this is going to allow us to actually cut through our 3D model and drag the drawing itself up and down. So for this one, it's cut off by the terrain. So if I bring it up just a little bit, so we can now see through the 3D cut in the building. We could change this to say a light cyan. All we need to do to publish our BIMX is just go up to file, then click BIMX hyper model. If we click on this one, this settings box will pop up, which is where we're going to set things up to publish our model. Now, before we do publish our model, there's a couple of really important things that we need to set up for the best possible fly through experience. Because once we actually publish our 3D, this is exactly how a client's going to see our model, including things like the camera angle. If we right click in our window and go to 3D projection settings, inside of here, we'll notice view cone. This is going to allow us to change the angle of the camera. Now, typically for an external 3D view, 50 degrees is pretty common. Let's say we go to 90 degrees and then click OK. We'll notice that it looks like it's pushed us way back, but all it's actually done is widened the angle of the camera. So if we go back to compare the two, if we go OK, and if we change it back and go OK, you might notice a slight difference, but this all changes when we start to fly through our model. So if we go to view and go to explore model, we'll now be able to fly through our model. Now, if we zoom in roughly to where we were before, we'll notice it's more of a fisheye lens kind of effect. Now, the reason why this is my preference for these kind of models is that when we're walking through the building, we can see a lot more of our surroundings. So if I fly on through and fly a little bit further into the living room, and if we pan around, we can actually see what's going on and it doesn't feel claustrophobic. So let's compare this to say a 50 degree lens and we'll go, okay. We'll notice straight away, it's much, much tighter. So if we start 3D exploring a model again, we'll notice it's a lot more difficult to actually get a human type perspective on the interior of the building. I highly recommend going a wider view cone. So if we go back to 90 and go, okay, we'll notice as we walk around, it's much, much more comfortable. If it's going to be from the exterior, the 50 degree can work quite nicely as it gives a much more traditional perspective that we're used to seeing from say real estate photo shots and most architectural renderings. Now, just before we publish, one other thing that's worth adding is a ceiling to our 3D model. If we don't have a ceiling, it can be pretty distracting to the client when they're walking through the space. Now to actually publish, we'll wanna make sure that we're in the 3D view. And I'd also highly recommend actually saving the view that we're going to be using. So if we right click on our 3D view and then go to save as view, from here, we can give it a custom name just so we can easily find it. And from here, we'll go create. So just on our right hand side, if we go to our view map, then all the way down to the bottom, we'll have our BMX view. If we double click this, it's always gonna bring us back to that view. This view is going to be what your client sees first when they're opening up your BMX. So I typically try to make sure we're not showing some weird random angle of the project. It's worthwhile taking a couple of seconds to line up a bit of a nicer view of the area that you wanna showcase. If we right click on our view and go redefine current window settings, this will make sure if we double click, it always brings us back to that view. From here with our view setup, we can go to file, we can go to publish BMX and hypermodel. And from here, we'll want to create a new publisher set. Now you can actually save it as a file and open it up in the BMX viewer, but I find it much easier just to publish it to the website and send the link to a client. That way they don't have to install any software. All they need to do is click and they can view their 3D and all the other parts of their project. So to publish it to the website, we'll click upload to BMX model transfer site. I'll give this one a name so we can easily identify it when we go to the BMX website. These settings we can leave as they are, and I typically show the entire layout book as well. Although you can choose a specific subset if you only wanna share certain drawings. From here, we'll go to next. At this point, you'll typically need to sign into your account because this is where it's going to publish the model to. And it's where you're going to be able to grab the link to be able to send to your client. From here, we'll just choose the folders. And typically for the least amount of friction for the client so that they can just click a link and actually view it, Provided that there's no sensitive information, I'd typically just leave this as public. And from here, we can just go publish. It's going to start uploading our file and this can take a couple of minutes. And this is what it should look like once it's finished publishing. From here, we'll want to go to the BMX website, which is this address just up here. We'll want to sign into our account. We'll put in our details and we'll hit sign in. And from here, we'll want to navigate to the folder that we published our BMX to. If you've got a bunch of models, I typically like to click on the uploaded text just so that it sorts it in order of when it was published. Now if I scroll down to the bottom, we'll see a little icon that looks like the model we just published. If we click on the text just here, this will bring us to our shareable model on the website. Now to get a link so that we can send it to our client, we'll just want to hit the little email button just here. This is going to create a draft email which we can then send to our client. 
Now, if we just want the link, we can copy the web address and just go control X to cut and then paste it into our email that we're going to send to our client. Now to actually explore your 3D model, on this image just here where it has the play button, if we just click onto it, it's going to open up a new tab. It'll typically bring us to that view that we set up a little bit earlier. And on that left-hand side, it typically loads in the drawing set. This can take around about 15 to 30 seconds before it loads in. So it's worth just giving it a minute. Now to actually explore the 3D, if we go up to this top left-hand side, making sure that we're in hypermodel index, if we now double click on the 3D, it should prompt us that it's loading. Now, again, this might take a minute, especially depending on the complexity of your model. But once it has loaded, it's going to bring us into that 3D view. If we just go over to the help bar just here, it's going to show us how to move around. The most critical ones I find are moving and rotating. So using these shortcuts, if we hold in W, we start to zoom into our model. Now, if we hold in left click, we can actually aim where that camera is zooming through. So if we do both those at the same time, it's like we're walking through the model. So holding in left click, we can rotate and then continue to navigate around in the 3D view. Now you might've noticed these little plan icons showing up throughout the model. These are actually really cool. So if we click on one of these, say this one just here, this is a shortcut to the floor plan view. Now we could just open up the 2D, but one of the unique things we can do with the BIMAC is if we go show in 3D, it's actually going to plot that floor plan on the ground. So if we say zoom out, we're going to see that our floor plan is overlay that 3D view. And it's not just the floor plan, we can do this for our elevations as well. So if we go show in 3D, this is going to show our project from a side on view of our elevations. Now to me, the coolest thing we can do in BIMX is to actually cut through the model at the same time. Now, if we go down to this bottom right hand corner and we click cut model, we'll notice a purple line pop up. If we hover over the edge of this purple and we click and drag, this is going to allow us to actually cut through our 3D model. Typically, I'll bring it down just a bit below where the head of the door is, and then I'll click outside. And from here, if we pan our view, this can give us a really unique perspective on our project. So we can see how the dimensions correspond with the actual 3D model. To me, it makes the process of explaining plans so much easier. Now, if we pan on down, and we wanna say do this, say, for a section, so we'll show the section in 3D. Let's pan around so that we're in the right orientation. Now, if we right-click on the actual image just here, we can go cut here. And this is going to cut through our 3D model. Now, if we click outside of the actual plan. Now, if you're not a big fan of orange, we can go to the settings and we can change the color. We could change this to say a light cyan and click out. We can also click and drag the drawing itself up and down. So for this one, it's cut off by the terrain. So if I bring it up just a little bit and then click out, if I then pan around, we can see the whole page as well as the 3D. We did set up the camera angle earlier in ArchiCAD. We can adjust the angle here inside as well. In the bottom right hand corner, if we go to field of view, we can adjust the camera angle just here. So to the left, it's going to make it a more narrow view. And to the right, it's going to make it a bit more like a fisheye lens. Now, when we're in the interior, I typically slide this to the right, just so it's easier to walk through. Now, opening and navigating the BIMX can take a little bit of explaining so that you don't have to repeat yourself or try and explain it in an email. I've created a video just over here, which walks through navigating BIMX. And even with zero experience, it walks through things step by step. So you can just copy it, paste it into an email, say, hey, if you'd like a walkthrough of how to navigate the 3D model, click this link below. And it just gives them a much nicer experience when they're trying to explore their 3D model. So feel free to copy the link and save a bunch of legwork. As always, the plans and the 3D model for this video is available over on the Patreon, which I'll have a link to just down below. And again, if you want to send that video to a client, I'll have it just over here. So you can click it, copy it, paste it, and save a bunch of the legwork. And feel free to check it out yourself. I'll have a link just over there. So go on and check it out.